What's up guys? I was Levin is finally here and it seems too good to be true. There's honestly so many features inside of it, but in this video, I wanted to share with you the top 11 features, the ground features of iOS 11 that make it what it is. So we're going to be going over the big stuff in this video, but don't worry, a lot of the more hidden, less known features we're going to talk about in the next video. So let's go ahead and explore iOS 11 and see what Apple changed in this update. Now, the very first thing is the lock screen. It doesn't seem different, but trust me, there's a lot to talk about here. So first off, unlocking it. Slide to unlock is back. You can actually slide up and unlock your phone if you don't have a passcode. If you have a passcode, the home press home to unlock is still as it was. Now the notification system on the lock screen has been rethought so you can bring up older notifications right here and that completely replaces the swipe down from the top over there. Super neat. And that way these notifications don't just randomly disappear, they're always there. Over here is your widgets view. As you can see, there's some bugs with iOS as it is still a beta right now. Over here is the camera. So that's just as usual, but the lock screen has been rethought and even the music player, which looks really, really cool, fits well with the notifications. So I just wanna show you a little demo of that. And look at that, you got a new music player. Now, if you receive a notification, it'll share the lock screen space with the music player just like that. Instead of before where the music player would completely hog the lock screen page, it now shares the space, super neat. Now jumping in, you'll notice that animations and the look of iOS 11 is a lot different too. Starting from the lock screen and the animation it takes to unlock iOS, look at that, very, very smooth. You'll notice Apple reworked the animations everywhere from something like opening an app and closing it, there's a very subtle different animation. You'll notice when you're exiting an app, greets you, it like runs at your face. So just like that, take a look at that, kind of a cool effect, I like that. Things such as even going into a sub menu, you'll see that the animations change up there as it adjusts to the selection you're going to make. Things as small as even moving applications around in wiggle mode have a new animation as well. It's a lot stickier, so it doesn't like bounce around everywhere. I noticed that. Opening up the control center even has a different animation. Opening up the notification center, which by the way, takes you back to the lock screen look right here. So it's a very curious choice, but it doesn't lock the phone. On the dock, you'll notice there are no icon labels whatsoever, which is a very clean look. I welcome it. I wish there was an option to turn all of them off. Also over here, you'll notice that the calculator has new icons. There's a new stock folder files. We'll get to that. And the app store and iTunes have new icon labels. So the overall look and feel of iOS has been reimagined. It doesn't look too different, but there certainly are updates to the animations and some little tiny details with the looks. Oh, not to mention the app switcher. So that has a new animation as well. It's a little bit different, it slides in from the side, very clean, I think it works well. So next up is messages. This one got a huge rework from Apple. So the overall interface is a little bit different. You'll notice it looks a lot like the music application. In fact, a lot of iOS 11 draws inspiration from the music application. But in here, jump into a conversation and on the bottom, you'll notice that these settings have been a little bit tweaked. Instead of the three icon setup over here that was a little busy, you have this over here. And the App Store has a new interface down here for the sticker packs and things like that. So you can quickly look through those. If you wanna do the heartbeat feature, it's still here, hasn't gone anywhere, just a nice clean new interface. And Apple has added some new effects. So if you want to go to the screen, you can actually see there are several new effects over here. There's a spotlight. And uh, I think that's just about it. So there are some new effects inside of iMessage, which has been completely reworked. And iMessage conversations will now be synced across all devices, which is a really cool feature as you no longer have to take that storage and keep it on your device. It's kept in the cloud instead, which saves you a lot of room. Next up, the control center. Personal opinion, I do like it. It seems a little hectic. Honestly, I think Apple could have optimized it just a little bit better, but overall it does the job. It's exactly what I wanted, a one page control center. So you have a slider over here for the brightness, a slider for the volume, kind of an elegant little solution there. So it seems like it's pretty limited, but don't be fooled. Not only is 3D touch supported in almost every area here, actually in every area you can 3D touch, especially useful on this one, which you could just slide up real quick instead of having to select an option uh, for the flash over here. Of course you have your usual toggles that are a little bit optimized, a little bit different. Looks really clean. You have a nice little animation when turning on orientation lock. This is the only one without a 3D touch toggle. Over here, you have a platter full of controls and stuff, and that's cool. You can even enable personal hotspots and other things. 
but it gets better guys. You can actually control how many toggles you want to have in control center, hence the empty space up here. As you add more, this moves up. Let me add some and show you. So in the control center tab over here, go ahead and find a toggle. This is so similar to flip control center, to CC settings, a lot that we've seen in the jailbreak side of things. But if you want to add a low power toggle, you can do that, so go ahead select plus, uh, let's say, actually we'll just add all of them, why not? Let's go ham on the control center and magnifier. Cool, so we have all of these settings enabled. Now jump into control center, whoa, look at that. You got a lot of extra things in here, so that's super cool. Low power mode, man, thank you Apple for listening. What's good? Interesting question, phone. Tell me your most interesting story. I'm certain you've heard it before. Look at that, Siri has a new voice. She sounds a lot more human, you could say. And this applies to both female and male voices. So Apple has been working for a long time to rework the voice and make it a lot more natural. Siri's got a new interface too. So Siri, what's the definition of pi? Which word? P, I. Look at that. New. As a noun, it means the 16th letter of the Greek alphabet. Greek letter pi. And check that out. So she's got a new interface, completely looks really, really clean, works well with the design language of iOS 11 overall. And there's also translation. Uh, Siri, translate we oui in French. No. no that's cool. It's, this is in beta. It's not fully cooked yet, but look at that. You can translate certain languages right now in Siri. That is so nice. There's also a new Siri kit, more APIs. So Siri's gonna get a lot stronger. You're gonna see her in more third-party applications. So Siri's got a huge rework for iOS 11. And there's an entirely new learning system for Siri where she will make suggestions in a whole bunch of different applications based on your behavior. So she will learn your behavior, your habits, and she will suggest things based on that. Apple gave a lot of good examples. Let's say you always hit the gym, she'll remind you, or you, know, you tell her to remind you something on a future date and she will do that continually. You know, basically she learns based on your habits. Now Apple Maps got a rework and it honestly fixes one thing that frustrated me the most, lane guidance. Apple Maps used to never tell you which lane to be in when turning, and now it will. Also, it'll display the current speed limit where applicable, where it can find it. And there's an altogether new feature called Do Not Disturb While Driving. So if your phone detects that you are moving while using the navigations, it will basically put your phone into complete dark mode and it will only allow certain notifications to come through if you whitelist them. Not only that, there is a crash. <laughs> there is a new feature inside of Apple Maps that will allow you to get detailed information inside of airports and malls. So it's going to be a slow rollout, but there will be hundreds of more, they say, each month. Now, photos and camera got a huge rework on all devices, in particular the 7 Plus got some nice features too. But so let's start with the General Photos app. If you actually jump in and take a live photo, you have several new effects you can apply. If you actually scroll up on the photo, you can see that there are several effects. Now you can choose between live, a loop on the photo, so it'll just go ahead and loop like that. And there is another one called the bounce, I believe. So it'll basically do a boomerang style where it'll go back and forth to your live photos. I see Apple is really getting with the times here. There's also long exposure, which is kind of neat. You can do after, mostly for nature and waterfall photos, but I think that's really cool. Also, which it gets better, you can choose which part of the live photo, the still image you want to keep. Some turn out better than others, and uh, <laughs> look at that, that's actually kind of funny. You can keep it right here, right here, and you can make that your key photo of the live photo. Super cool. Now the portrait mode for the iPhone 7 Plus has received some updates as well. So it now works in the dark. It'll now show HDR and it's improved in many ways. So you're gonna notice a much better experience. It's a lot higher quality too. So I can't wait to try that out. But portrait mode has been improved and there's a new codec used in iOS 11 for video and photos, which means your photos will actually take up two times less storage using the new HEVC codex. That means if you have a low storage device, upgrading to iOS 11 will be very, very good for you storage wise. You'll be able to take a lot more pictures and a lot more videos. And the App Store. The App Store has got a complete rework. It looks completely different. To be honest with you, I think it's it's not good for the App Store because it's just too big. A lot of people like to see you know things compact in that list view, which uh, is now gone. Everything is really blown up like the music application. So I'm personally not a fan, but this is the new look of the App Store. There are several new tabs. 
So today, games and apps. And in here, you'll find basically what you had before, just slightly uh, different placement in the App Store. Not to mention now applications, you can separately buy the in-app purchases instead of just the app. So you'll find the in-app purchases in the App Store instead of just within the app. So I think that's a little bit too much clutter, but Apple seems to think it's a good idea. And HomeKit has received support for speakers now. So that means multi-room support. You'll be able to set up speakers in one room or the other and be able to control them through the HomeKit here. HomeKit API has been expanded as well as support with AirPlay 2. So those together will be able to control speakers and of course, eventually the new HomePod speaker from Apple. Although it doesn't seem like much, a lot of people don't necessarily use this as a home owner, it's a great feature to have multi-room support. And the iPad, it got its biggest update ever. So starting with the Apple dock, which slides up from the bottom, just like that, you can quickly enter split view just by dragging up and dragging over. Now the first icon or the first uh, actual page is the separate one that you can quickly move around over here. And to make it a split view, just drag down on the second one and then you can adjust it like before. So it's a completely reworked solution for getting the split view open. Slide over basically doesn't really exist anymore. Also over here, you have all of your icons. You can add as many as you want. It's a lot like the dock uh, from Mac OS, which is really neat. So you've got this, you've got the little single view that you can keep overlapped on other applications. But now to communicate between them, you have drag and drop. You can take files from one, drag them to there and vice versa. You can even use the dock to hold on files from here. It'll open up a little mini icon if you have any in there and you can drag files over to certain applications. It's super, super neat. Apple solution for the iPad is great. And one of the cooler mini features is the keyboard. So Apple actually added a quick type keyboard so you can get the secondary icon just by dragging down or dragging up in some cases. So that's that way, this is this way, super, super neat. I love a little feature like this. It saves a lot of time if you wanna to get to those secondary keys just like that. And files, this is such a welcome feature. The first native file browser for the iPhone. Well, of course, besides iCloud Drive, this one is for the physical files on the device. Now, before you get excited, it's not root access or anything like that. You'll be able to see files, but not necessarily the actual files of the phone, just the ones Apple wants you to see. So this actually combines iCloud Drive and third-party applications as well. So you'll be able to use your third-party ones all in one place, quickly copy between them, paste between them. It's actually a great solution. So this is especially useful on the iPad, which getting to my next point, Apple has completely reworked, but overall file support, file browser is now available on the iPhone. And Apple has finally fixed something that has plagued us forever. Super annoying, but there is a new music video player and it's not just that, it's the volume HUD within it has went up here. So instead of you know going on top of your media, it's there, super, super neat. I really, really love Apple's solution for that. So there you go, guys, just a rough, quick look at the features in iOS 11. This is the foundation features. There's a ton of smaller ones I'm gonna be covering here very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. But overall, great update, guys. I would recommend trying it out, just not on your primary device. So if you guys want to go ahead and install it, you can do so easily using the video up there. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this iOS 11 preview for you, and I'll be updating it as more betas come along. Peace.